everybody. Um, we're just going to get right to it. Uh, we had a few questions from last week and some questions that have come in um, kind of consistently uh, that we wanted to address. Uh, I, I will. So, so some of the questions last week, which we did not answer, um, I'm, I'm just going to answer right now. Uh, so one of the questions is for, for question 9.18. And Neil, are you able to share the questionnaire? Yeah, I think so. Let's see. Hold on one sec. All right. Give me one second. Okay. So we're looking for 9.18, right? 9.18. There we go. Although I just lost. Okay. Okay. This works. What steps has your organization taken to support employee mental health and well-being in your workplace? So, yeah. And so the, the question that we have is, what do we mean by, um, uh, Neil, can you? Sure. Sure. Yeah. We're trying to see, essentially. Well, can you scroll down, though? In the oh, question? yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. Think it's, I don't think the. We have a lot of options on this question. Yeah. We have mandatory days off or times during which employees are not expected to be working that the person's basically saying, what do you mean? Like we have holidays where everybody's off is, does that count? And so Neil, go ahead, please. So what we're looking for here are days where people are basically asked to not email uh, other members of the company to not engage them on days when they should have that day off, right? A, a, a true break, from the working environment. Uh, you know, these days there are a lot of situations and especially during remote work where it can be tempting for people to catch up with work during that sort of downtime or for managers to get something off of their plate. And really what we're looking for is that respite around, uh, you know, time off and making sure that people are actually taking the time off and taking that much needed break. I think that that should be the, the quick and simple explanation for yep. that. Um, we, we've gotten a consistent question that I'm not going to pull up the specific question, um, but, but we keep getting it. We've caused some confusion about what we're looking for with narratives uh, supplementing the submission. And this is hard um, because we don't know what we don't know. And, and we don't want to open a Pandora's box that causes people to have to write a lot. I mean, do a lot of work writing narratives. And we get some companies that write very long narratives. And so we wanted to address this and tell you really what we're looking for. So we're going to back up to answer this question. The, we score the, this process, the scoring process for this, there are points associated with all of the multiple choice questions. And there are points associated with the supplemental documentation that we ask to see. Um, some of that supplemental documentation specifically this year asks for narrative explanation. For example, instead of just handing us training example, please tell us what you're handing us. Um, okay, so that's pretty specific. I think what's causing confusion is, and it's mainly me telling people to do this, and this is why I'm, I'm going to try, I'm going to explain it. We, we do offer the opportunity for narratives that highlight or set up your submission. We are not asking for narratives that, that discuss every question. We are, not ask, we are not requiring, there is no required narrative. You are not gonna get points off because there's not a narrative. But we do believe that often if there's something that, that an explanation will help us understand that you're showing to us, that's really helpful to us. If there's something that you are particularly proud of and you don't think we're asking about it without opening a Pandora's box that makes you feel like you need to come up with something like that. But if there's something you really want to explain to us that you don't think that we're getting or we're getting from your submission, let us know. If there are questions that you have specific concerns about, I don't know if I should say A or B, I'm going to say A and explain it to Atmosphere. please do that but please don't think that that means that you have to do that. You don't have to explain every multiple choice answer. So what we're looking for are short narrative summaries that tee up what you are showing us. How? And if that doesn't answer the question, please let us know and we'll continue to try to explain it. But it's hard because we're trying to be more clear to you. But again, we don't know what we don't know, but we also don't want to open up some kind of uh, unlimited burden on you to start writing down everything that you think we may want to know. 
I, I think that's very well put. Thank you. Uh, we did have a question from another attendee asking, well, they, they said that their processing fee is not reflected on the portal and they received confirmation uh, through another method, maybe email, uh, that it was received. They ask, do they need to follow up with us? And our answer is no. If you've already received confirmation from our accounting team or some other member of Ethosphere that your fee has been received, you can rest assured that it has indeed been received. Uh, the portal is a little slow in catching up on that confirmation. Uh, we're working hard to make sure that it is caught up, but no, if, if you've already got that alternate confirmation, you are good. Thanks, Neil. And, and question 420, if you could pull that up. Um, Absolutely. I'll take a shot at this. So the question is, for question 420, can you explain the difference between formal and informal? What is the intention of this question? So this question is, select the following. We're, we're asking about how ethics and compliance follows up with people managers after people managers have gone and had conversations about ethics and compliance topics with their direct reports. What we're looking for here is... Are you staying close? Are you sending the managers out to have these conversations and they go and they have these conversations and, and that's it? Are you, or are you saying, hey, you need to go have these conversations and then you have some kind of process? And, and the question hinges on the word formal, but you have what we mean by formal is you have an actual process in place that says we are going to go and follow up with managers in this fashion. So there's actually some kind of plan to go and follow up with managers. Informal would be, I'm going to go and talk to managers. Like I know they're out there doing this. I'm gonna pick up the phone or, or in, in a non-COVID world, or for those of you back in the office, swing by their office or their cubicle. And I'm gonna say, hey, did you have that conversation? How did it go? To, to us, that is informal. So you are following up versus you have a plan and an actual process to follow up. That would be formal. Excellent. So we have another question around question 6.4. Let me bring this up. Question 6.4 6 asks, is your company currently conducting some sort of root cause analysis uh, to assign root causes uh, to the instance incidences of misconduct that have been investigated here? And we offer you several options to say, yes, it's on all investigations or on investigations of a certain level of significance, regardless of how it was raised, uh, and so on and so on. And then we have a no, we're not consistently doing it. Our, today's questioner wanted to know, uh, you know, their closest response is something that could be an other, but none of the options really kind of fit the situation. Um, they were asking, could they select no? Um, I think based on this, you could select either, you know, that that yes, consistently, but, or the no. And as we indicated earlier, and we talked earlier about the short written uh, narrative responses to kind of explain your answer, this is a great example of that, uh, where we would instruct you, pick the one that most closely resembles what you're doing, and we will look at that short narrative response and take that into consideration when we're reviewing your application. And, you know, we'll, we'll look at these things overall accordingly. Yeah. So, so when you select the yes, we are, I am assuming they're, they're conducting root cause analysis, but not consistently is, I mean, just based on reading the question, how you would have other, but not fit there. When you give that narrative, we if you give a response to an other response, and this goes throughout the questionnaire, we manually score that. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like you are conducting root cause analysis, um, we, we will score that accordingly. Um, well, it looks like there's a question about 8.3. Might be a good one. Yeah. Um, so, so this question is our third party codes, code says that our code applies. If our code covers the topics, is it appropriate for us to select the topics? No, I don't think so. I, I think that that's, um, if you're just generally referring to your code of conduct, what we're trying to get at here is we don't think it's a best practice to refer suppliers to your code of conduct because your code of conduct, I mean, we're the supplier often and I'm our legal representative. So I deal with this all the time. I cannot agree in good faith that my whole company will follow your code of conduct. Mm -hmm. um, and so having a third party code that simply refers somebody to the code of conduct really is not what we're talking about here. So we're really looking for what is in your third party code of conduct. 
absolutely agreed. Uh, and I see another one that I that I'd like a shot at, Neil. Um, Go for it. Supporting documentation question. Oh wait, yeah. Reporting. Oh wait, no, 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 wait. Why doesn't? I'm sorry. I, hey, are you are um, you going to take mine? Why doesn't the document request follow the categories in the survey? Mm -hmm. It causes extra work for us to have to double check which documents you want. This is very intentional. Oh, I'm sorry, Neil. You had you had said you oh, wanted no. to answer. This no, question. no, I was actually going to pass I, part of this. I thought, you. and I was I got excited. Uh, <laughs> this was very intentional, and for companies that have been uh, following uh, participating over the years, this is a shift we have made that we thought was a very big change in our language, and I'm sure other people didn't notice. Um, we used to say that we're using the documentation to verify your multiple choice responses. We no longer say that. We are not tying it directly to the questionnaire because we are asking for those documents so that we can evaluate subjectively certain aspects of your program. So it's no longer, you know, for question three, please show us something that proves up your answer. It's, we would like to see examples of your training because we are going to subjectively evaluate your training. And so we very intentionally decoupled it. And so I would, if I were answering this, if, if I were participating in the process, I would view it as two separate asks, right? One is, filling out the multiple choice questionnaire. And the other one is, here's the supplemental documentation that they're requesting. And, and we've intentionally decoupled that because we don't want you to feel like we're just trying to somehow double check our, our multiple choice questions. Good point, good point. Um, I, I want to address a question here about question 4.24. Uh, they're saying it skipped on the PDF and the annotated survey. This was something we had to correct very early on in the release process. I can assure you there is a question 4.24. It was simply a, a printing publishing error that we had, and it is there in the survey and in the, uh, uh, in the PDF and the documentation. If you need to download another copy of this, it is available in the application information uh, in the application document, as well as on the application portal. You have a link there to the most recent, most updated versions of the EQ survey and the annotated survey, which include 4.24. Um, Neil, we have a question here that I'm going to ask you if you understand it, and then you can answer it, or we may just ask for further explanation from the person asking it. Hmm. It's a supporting documentation question. Reporting on misconduct and investigation data. Can this include a large subset of employees like a business area, not necessarily all employees? Neil, do you understand I, what that's referring to? I think this question is better answered with a bit more surrounding detail and surrounding color. This is one where, this is a great example of a question that maybe uh, look asking our WME applications inbox and giving us a bit more context around what you're really seeking to do and seeking to put out. And we can give you a bit more additional guidance. Yeah, you, you know, yeah, Neil. So I just went and found the question that this refers to. Ah, okay. Um, so apologies. It, the question actually makes a lot of sense. It's a good question. And I'm glad oh. you asked it because um, if, if you look, so in our supporting documentation, we have a section that says, or a, a topic that says reporting on the ethics and compliance program to the board or other governing authority. And I'm assuming that that's what this is talking about. Um, we are not asking for reporting on misconduct and investigation data. We want to be really clear. We're asking for what you're reporting to the board. We are looking for beyond that, right? We don't want to see the misconduct and investigation data. We are, we are looking to see whether you are discussing with your board or, or the audit committee or the relevant committee, if you are discussing the ethics and compliance program really beyond the misconduct and investigation data. Um, and so we're looking to see, are you talking about your training? Are you talking about initiatives? Are you talking about risks? Are you talking about the evaluation of your program? Um, so I, if that doesn't answer the question, please let us know. Um, I, I think that's a great catch, yeah. Um, let's see. So someone asked, so you don't need an executive summary or, you know, one for each category in the EQ survey. And there are 10 categories in the EQ survey. And they ask, well, is this only for the questions we want to explain more? And I would say generally, yes. Or the uh, sections. Yeah. Like if there's a section you want to explain more, we're happy to take those introductions too. But, but that does not, you should not feel like you have to provide yeah. an executive summary for every section. Yeah. But if you want to tee up, hey, this is what this is how 
our training works. That makes sense to me, right? <laughs> but if you want to tee up, here's how our investigation process works, unless there's something unusual about it, it seems to me like our multiple choice questions are going to get at it. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. I'm trying to find an interesting, interesting group question here. Um, these, these get into some of the specifics of the question. Uh, maybe we could look at question 1.30, I guess, if you want to dive into that a bit. We had somebody ask, what if none of the answers in 1.30 apply? So I'm, I'm sure you'll come across a number of situations here within the EQ where you look at a question, you say, none of this really does seem to apply. You know, you've, you've, and this is a difficult question in itself because it gets around to, you know, we're asking, do any of these individuals identify? And generally we mean self-identify as a different ethnicity than the majority ethnicity in the country where that, that company is headquartered. And yeah, you may have a situation that doesn't necessarily fit into one of these check boxes. Um, you know, this is again, where if, if you can find a situation where at least one of those C-suite officers does publicly self-identify somewhere in documentation or in some other, you know, uh, way to the company, you can check off that box. Uh, again, this is where a very short narrative can also help explain the situation because we know there are going to be very unusual situations around some of these questions. Uh, I, I wouldn't go overboard with explaining that you collect a whole bunch of data in this situation and that situation. Just a simple explanation around, you know, uh, uh, your potential particular efforts at um, ensuring that there is a degree of diversity within your C-suite. That's really what we're looking for, right? And as, as, as Michael said earlier, we're, we're kind of getting around to that NASDAQ, uh, 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 is, is it more of a requirement or guidance around ensuring that there is some diversity in leadership and guidance within. Yeah, for US, for NASDAQ listed companies, um, stay tuned for next year, a yeah. much better question. <laughs> um, we think there's a really important question to ask. We have struggled in asking it for a worldwide questionnaire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we've struggled in asking it in a way that by how we phrase it will not offend somebody. We really have struggled with this. And, um, and I think the NASDAQ, uh, what the NASDAQ rule um, is requiring really, you're going to see we will be evolving and, and adopting a lot of that. Um, so we understand that this is a really hard question to answer. This may be one where narrative is helpful, right? I wouldn't, I would not spend a lot of time. Um, I, I think it's a really, really hard question for us to ask. If, if, if there's not an obvious answer to you, I would answer as best you can give us a narrative like Neil said, and then move on. Um, there's a question here. Is it better to default to the yes than the no if you're going to include a narrative? If So I think this is in response to me saying, listen, if there's an other response and you fit it, and there's a narrative after the other response, select that. If it really is other, go with other and then describe it to us in the questionnaire. Because as we go through the way that we score it, when it says other, it's going to kind of fill it in like it was one of the choices. And we're going to see what your other response is. Good. We're getting a lot of good questions. I know. These are great questions today. Uh, let's see. Neil, is 4.22, I think this might be um, one that we identified as a systems issue and how we updated this. Um, 4.22, the question is, um, uh, do senior executive leaders include examples of ethical decisions they have faced in their communications to employees, regardless of modality or format? I want yeah. to confirm that this is not a select all that apply. Um, yeah. This was supposed to be a multi-select when we drafted it, but it appears to be, Neil, is it a single select? It is a single select, unfortunately. Uh, the way we will look at this is, you know, if, if you have one or the other of these, these options, that's, that's a good sign. So yeah, if, if you have one or the other, just pick one. To be clear, our A answer would be picking both but, yeses, <laughs> but, uh, but when we updated it, we, there was a small oversight. So uh, pick one of them and, and we will score them both equally um, as full credit. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And someone asked about 9.16. And this is 
in relationship to employee workforce benefits programs, initiatives, things like that. And you'll say things here around bereavement leave and affirmative action plans and carpooling, a lot of these benefits that you, know, you're, uh, you offer to your employees, maybe not to every single employee across the world, but you do offer it in some form to your employees. Uh, our questioner asked about the uh, the Adoption or f Fertility Assistance Program. And this is very simply, uh, you know, generally when we see these, it's a company offering, uh, for example, time off or, uh, you know, uh, credits or the ability to, you know, use certain resources that, uh, you know, can be, can be found through the company or through company programs in order to assist those people with, you know, adoption or fertility. Uh, 8.7. Thanks, Neil. Ah, there um, we go. How should we answer? If you can go to, oh, I like that. Sir. That's smart. Um, I just scroll through really fast. Everyone will get seasick. Um, how should we answer if we have some third parties? So this is, our third parties required? Basically, how are you pushing your code of conduct down onto third parties? Um, so how should we answer if we have some third parties that are contractually required and other third parties that are not? Um, I would, so, so we believe in a risk-based approach. If you have made an intelligent, risk-based, I, I don't want you to judge your intelligence. If you've really thought this through and in a risk-based fashion, you ha have some companies where you've put it into the contract, then please include it. Our questions, unless it states it in the question, we believe in a risk-based approach to all of this. And so if you're doing it where you think it makes sense, again, unless the question says differently, like all, um, Answer answer it as if you're doing it, because again, we we defer to you if you've made a risk based decision. Great. We had another questioner ask about nine one a, which is in our impact section. And I know this language can be a little confusing because we're asking, hey, you know, what what of these impacts or impact initiatives, these areas uh, that you know your company looks at and says, hey, these are important to our stakeholders into the company. And we ask them here, hey, does your organization ordinarily assess and or report on? And the question was, what does ordinarily assess? Great question. I like this because that really does get into the meat of, are you paying attention to any of these areas, such as volunteering, human rights, data security, as a risk area or an opportunity area? And you're paying attention to certain metrics and certain things that your company is or is not doing in that space. For example, with data security, data privacy, has your company decided that this is an important thing to its stakeholders and to the business and decided that it's a risk area that it wants to put some targets or goals around and it's actively looking at the components of that risk area or that opportunity area and trying to measure some progress into making the situation better? So for example, yeah, are you hardening your firewall systems? Are you making sure that everybody's desktop is updated? Are you training people on data security inside of the organization and saying, okay, we now have hundred percent of our workforce trained on data security. Those can be steps that you can take and that you can measure and assess as to that risk profile that you might have with that. So that's what we mean by ordinarily assess. Thanks, Neil. Um, I will handle the next two. Great. Um, because while you were talking, I was thinking about them. So I, um, question 4.25, if you could go to that. Actually, it's 4.24. Oh, that's right. I think right. there's a typo in the question. That's right. There is no 4.25. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a test. Uh, there you go. Can you give an example of tracking frequency of downloads? So if you go down to the bottom. So one of the, this is how are you um, measuring if your communications are working? Uh, some companies have the ability to, to monitor, so, so if the policy or a resource is uh, in a management, I, I'm, I'm not a technology person, so, but, but if it's in a database, right, a certain data, type of database, whenever anybody goes and opens it through a link, you can, you can monitor whether somebody is opening it or not. And, and you can track if people have been opening it. So for example, you might have a training on, everybody always uses anti-corruption. I'm gonna go antitrust, right? You have an antitrust training. Are you paying attention to, or excuse me, a communication. You have a communication about antitrust. Um, you could even include uh, the policy in that communication. And are, are you paying attention to the timing of the communications 
versus people going and wanting to know more. Uh, expense reporting. You have an expense reporting communication and you have a decision tree that you have created. That to us would be a resource. Are you tracking um, whether people are opening that resource? So really this, um, this backs up to, do you have the technical ability to keep track of um, how many people are, are opening up a policy or your code or a resource. Um, yeah. The next question, and why I said I would handle the next two is because it's my, I, I thank you for whoever the attendee is that is following up on my incorrect understanding of their earlier question, which is the supporting document question was about investigations data that was referring to document folder four in which Ethisphere we seek to understand the efforts, if any, that you're sharing data regarding concerns reported, results of investigations and actions taken. Um, the question is whether this can be a presentation to a subset of employees with the company, like business area employees or leaders, or are you really looking for all employees or public dissemination? And Neil, can you go to that question? What I guess it's not the question, it's- um, it's, it's in a document. Yeah, let me, so let me pull it up just to make sure that I'm being um, accurate in answering. Um, uh yes well so so actually let me this is this is really good because this catches us in a not an inconsistency but this is kind of tied to a question in the eq and earlier i said we've disassociated them yes as an example regardless of how you answer the question i would submit to us with an explanation hey we are sharing this right our a answer is you're you're sending it out to all the employees you've got nothing to hide you're fully transparent we love to see it's a it's a different answer, but using it for manager training, right? The reason we're having manager training is because we had 3,000 concerns raised last year and 90% of them came to a manager. And let's really dig into this and be transparent about it. If you are sharing it outside of, I'll call it upper level management or whoever um, needs to see it to update the board or to do the investigations, absolutely explain that to us and show us um, examples of it and evidence of it. So regardless of how you answer the questionnaire, please show us how you're sharing this. It doesn't have to be all employees or public dissemination is my point. All right. Uh, do we want to try and answer one more? I know we're right at time. Um, let's see. For explanatory text for any particular question, can we refer to the explanatory text in another question or should we repeat the text? Ooh. Yeah, if, if we've already got it explained in one place, should we just refer to the other that one place? I would say if you've got it in doc in, in your supporting documentation, like you've uploaded it to Box and you've got it explained out somewhere else very well, I would take the extra step of simply copying that over to your explanation in the other place and, just so yeah. somebody doesn't miss it. Well, and I also want to be clear, if it's something that's asked for in the EQ, in the multiple choice, if it's a text response asked for there, we don't really want to toggle back and forth. That's in front of us mm -hmm. and we're scoring it. If we yeah. say like, if there's a text question in the questionnaire online, we would rather see an answer there. And if you run out of room, you can refer us to something else. But what we, it's, it's a lot harder for us to just keep getting everybody, um, like telling us to go see some other document, right? If we ask like in the other responses, answer the other response. So if this question is, we, we answered it in another response earlier, I would answer it again because we are walking through question by question and, and scoring this. Okay. I, I think that kind of brings us to time. Yeah, I, but Chelsea just sent us a note and Chelsea's in charge. Ah, ah so okay. We're going to um, tackle, there's two questions remaining. Then um, I will I will reshare here. Oh no! Now there's more questions coming in. <laughs> Open the floodgates. Yes. Yes. So uh, I, I will. As on? you're going to the next question, you do not need to provide. Do we need to provide documentation for all the questions? No. We are trying to make this less burdensome on you and less burdensome on us. Please provide the documents that we ask for. Yes. If you are uncomfortable with that, reach out to us, right? I know there are companies that have been doing this for a decade and they're really uncomfortable with that. Please reach out to us and we'll talk about it. Yeah. Um, six, six, we've got a question about that. The answers aren't contradictory, but the survey only allows you to select one of the below. That is, have you reviewed, revised, created training based on assigning root causes? Uh, yeah. Uh, 
relevant policies. Yeah, um, if, if you do want to explain that one out and that particular situation, you, you can't really just select one, you are welcome to select this last option and explain in the space provided exactly what your situation is if you don't feel comfortable selecting just one. Do you want to take the one about question 5.6? Um, sure. What if some of the, so 5.6, if you can go to it, um, indicate the resources or tools available for reporting misconduct and raising concerns at your company. Okay. What if some of the resources are required in some countries, but not in others? For example, labor unions, works councils are required in certain regions and so are ombudspersons, but they are not available globally. So this is, again, to reiterate, we are deferring to you, right? A lot of the companies are large multinational companies. Um, I would say all, almost all. Uh, we defer to you for a risk-based or regionally based appropriate answer. If you have an ombudsperson in Europe, but not in the United States, select it, right? Um, if, you, if you have it available, um, somewhere and you've decided that that's appropriate for there, then, then we defer to you and please select that. Okay, let's see here. Uh, we, we do have a different question asking whether 6.6 was multi-select. 6.6, uh, if you look here on the latest version of the survey here, this is actually single select. Uh, the, the parentheses here indicate that you can only select one of these options. Um, the multiple select questions, let me scroll up and find one, are used with these square brackets. That, that indicates the difference between multiple select and single select. Okay. All right. I think we, we cleared the queue. Please okay. keep reaching out to us. I hope everybody has a really, really nice day. Um, and we, you can link back to the previous office hours. We also, again, we collect these questions uh, in between the office hours and we'll respond to them. If you have a question that's really specific to your company, let us know. Um, and if this is really helpful for us too, selfishly, because we're always improving our process. So thank you all for your time. And I hope that everybody stays safe and enjoys the fall. Bye.